This video is brought to you by Sailrite. In this video, we're going to be showing you how to make a box cushion, and this cushion includes piping and also a stripe, which makes the construction a little bit more difficult. By the time you're done watching this video, you too will be able to make your own box cushions. Angela from the Sailrite Loft is going to show us how it's done. In this video, we're going to be retasking this uh, old cushion with a new cover. So we're going to remove the old foam and reuse it to make a box cushion. The old cushion here was filled with the compressed polyester. Sayerite sells this compressed polyester. It's called Fairfield Poly Fill New Foam. And that compressed polyester was actually wrapped with a batting material. Again, Sayerite sells that as well. Anja has placed that foam on top of the fabric and then rolled it over once to determine the length of fabric that she needs to cut to create the top plate and the bottom plate for our boxed cushion. In order to cut the top plate and the bottom plate out at one time, we'll fold the fabric in half so the outside surfaces are facing each other. Lay the foam on top and then we'll trace around it with a pencil. A box cushion consists of a top plate and a bottom plate and boxing. That's the fabric that wraps around the edges. We want the top plate and the bottom plate to be the exact same size as the foam. So Angela's holding the pencil right along the edge and tracing around the foam following the same shape as the foam. After she's removed the foam, she'll verify that her lines that are straight are perfectly straight with a yardstick. If they're not, she'll straighten them out. Once we're satisfied, we'll take a hot knife and cut the fabric out. Using a hot knife helps to prevent the unraveling of the fabric, which is really a pain to work with if it's unraveling on you. So, using a hot knife, we're cutting the top plate and the bottom plate out at the same time. We wanted to show a demo of using scissors versus a hot knife. Notice that when the fabric is cut with scissors, it unravels easily and quickly. Imagine how badly it will unravel as you constantly work with your plates, boxing, and piping. It can be very messy. But if you use a hot knife like the Sayerite Edge, unraveling edges are almost totally eliminated. If you don't have a professional hot knife like this, you can sometimes use a wood burning tool, a soldering gun, or you can use pinking shears, which will help. The polyester fabric has a tendency to bond to itself once it's been cut with a hot knife, so we have to separate the panels with scissors after it's been cut out with the knife. If you choose to use a Sunbrella furniture fabric, you will not have to use scissors to help separate the fabrics once the hot knife is used. They pull apart easily. Since this cushion has stripes, we don't have to worry about lining up the top plate and the bottom plate when it comes to sewing them together. This cushion has stripes. We're going to use those as matchup marks, but let's talk about cushions that have no stripes. For cushions that have no stripes, like these two plates, we want to stack the plates on top of each other and make match-up notches at the corners and even along the long runs. Here you can see we're using scissors and cutting small triangles that don't go so deep into the fabric that they'll show up after we're done sewing. You can also use a hot knife in lieu of scissors. Because our cushion has stripes, we don't need to worry about this because the stripes will help us to line up the top plate and the bottom plate as we sew it to the boxing. We've already sewn the boxing to this plate and that will be shown in a later step, so don't panic. We just want to show you the process of making the match-up notches. Now we need to transfer the match-up notches that are on the plate to the boxing. To do this, just fold the corner, as Angela does here, and then transfer that mark directly from the corner to the corner of the boxing. She's using scissors here to make a triangular cut. We'll do that at each one of the corners. Just lay the corner down flat, and then be sure that the, the match-up notch on the plate is directly across the matchup mark that you will install on the edge of the boxing. These notches will make it possible for us to sew on the two plates so that they're directly across from each other when we sew them onto the boxing. And we want to do that, place a matchup mark approximately every two to three feet. Uh, that way when we're sewing, we can use those as a reference to be sure that we're sewing the plates on correctly. Here we're doing it to the middle section. We marked it with a pencil and then we'll notch it with a hot knife. Now we'll place that assembly on top of the other plate that has the match-up notches already in it. Then we'll take it to the sewing machine and as we sew, we'll be sure that the match-up marks are on top of each other. So here she's sewing a half inch away from the raw edge of the fabric. This cushion has no piping. Here she's being sure that that match-up mark at the corner will line up perfectly. 
and then she holds the fabric as she sews it so that the top plate and the bottom plate are matched up perfectly. As we come to the end of our sewing, you'll see the match-up notches are a little bit off. And you'll notice the top plate, Angela is feeding in a little bit faster than she is the bottom plate. You can see that by all the excess little wrinkles. And that's completely acceptable. What you want, you can manipulate typically by moving one plate faster or slower than the other. Just don't do it over too short of an area. Gradually make adjustments, ensuring that the marks match up. That's an overhead look at how match-up notches are used. Now let's go back to our main project. Next, measure the thickness of your foam. Here you can see the compressed polyester with the batting wrapped around it. And as we press it down slightly, you notice it measures three and a quarter inches. Next, we'll cut boxing. She's gonna first straighten this edge because it's not cut straight. There are no set in stone rules for making the width of the boxing. Typically, we make the width of the boxing the thickness of the foam plus a quarter inch to a half inch for seam allowance. That makes for a tight fitting cushion and we think it looks best that way. So since our foam with the batting measures three and a quarter inches, we're making boxing strips that are three and three quarter inches. We've added a half inch for seam allowance. Next, measure the width of the zipper that will be used for your cushion. We're next gonna concentrate on cutting the zipper plaque or the boxing for the zipper. Our zipper measures one and a quarter inches, so we'll add that to the width of the boxing that we've cut out, which is three and three quarter inches. So three and three quarter plus one and a quarter equals five inches. We're gonna cut a single strip for the zipper plaque that is five inches wide. To go around the perimeter of our cushion, we need two regular boxing strips and one zipper plaque strip. So three strips in total, two that are boxing and one that's a zipper plaque. Since we're using a striped fabric, we have to be careful how we join the boxing strips together. Our cushion requires two strips of boxing and one zipper plaque. We'll not join the zipper plaque to the boxing because it's striped. We need to be careful to make the stripes uniform. So here Angela is laying the fabric for the boxing on top of itself so the inside surfaces are facing each other. Then she takes it to that stripe and marks where she needs to sew it in the center of the stripe here so that when she unfolds the boxing, it will be the same size as the stripe on the fabric. Now we'll take this boxing over to the sewing machine and sew a straight stitch right along that pencil mark that she marked on the fabric, sewing the two halves of the boxing together. Be sure to reverse at the beginning and also at the end to lock your stitch in place. For this cushion, we'll be making our own piping out of the same fabric the cushion is made from. We're going to make a bias piping, so we're going to cut the fabric along the bias of the fabric, mainly because it's a striped fabric. Typically, I choose to do a straight cut binding, which usually results in a good cushion. Fabric piping is usually cut to one and a quarter inches in width. That's what Angela is marking here on the fabric along the bias. She'll then strike a line with a pencil and a yardstick so she can cut the piping cloth to the right width. If your cushion has stripes as ours does, you can choose to cut a straight cut piping instead of a bias cut piping, but you'll have to be careful to line up the stripe pattern if that's important to you. Since we are cutting on the bias, the stripes will be at a diagonal and it will typically not clash with the striped pattern of the fabric. Here's a look ahead at our finished cushion with the piping cut on the bias. She looks good. If you want the stripes of the piping to match up with the cushion stripes, you can cut a straight cut binding along the fill of the fabric. But just know that it requires more effort to line up the plates, boxing, and piping stripes. A task that can be done, but is more labor intensive. The piping for this cushion is cut along the bias, but if I have my choice and I don't have to worry about stripes or patterns, I'll usually make a straight cut binding. It saves on fabric waste. Out of the four strips of piping cover cloth that we cut, we need to now join those together. We overlap them as shown here in the video at 90 degrees to each other and we try to match up the stripes so that they look good as well if your fabric has stripes. Then sew across the width and cut the excess fabric that hangs over the edge. That joins one strip to the next. Do that on all the strips that are required. We're gonna be using piping on the top side and the bottom side. That's a preference, not a requirement. 
There are multiple ways to make piping. We're going to use double-sided tape and baste our piping cover to the foam piping that you can purchase from Sayerite. However, you can also sew it in place. Here's another project and here we're going to take some fabric that's cut to one and a quarter inches, fold it over our foam piping, place it in the Alterfeed LS1 with the cording foot, uh, which is standard in the sewing machine, and sew it together instead of using the double-sided tape. Once it's been sewn together, then we can take it over to our plate and add our boxing, as we are doing here. Then take it to the sewing machine and sew it yet again. This will make our assembly, our plate, our piping, and our boxing and it is sewn in place rather than basted in place. Typically, you don't need to baste anything in place if it doesn't have a pattern or stripe to it. There it is, finished. Let's go back to showing how Angela is basting the piping together. By using the double-sided tape, this is a quarter-inch basting tape for canvas, and basting it on our piping cover, and then folding the piping cover over the foam cord, you're assured that you're not going to see the preliminary stitch that holds the piping together. There is no stitch, so you won't see it in the end results. So, it is an alternative, and Angela likes to make cushions doing it this way. Now, most people typically sew it in place, as we showed earlier. So, the choice is yours. You can sew it, or you can use double-sided tape and baste it. We've made enough piping for both the top side and the bottom side of the cushion. We have our boxing, we have our plates, and we have the fabric for the zipper plaque. We're going to work on the zipper plaque next. Before we can assemble everything, we need to create our zipper plaque. There are multiple ways to create a zipper plaque. Here, Angela is determining where the zipper plaque will stop, and she cuts the excess off with the Sayerite Edge Hot Knife. To determine the length of the zipper plaque, you want it large enough that it makes it easy to insert the foam, but you also want the seam to fall in the right spot. We want our seams to fall in the back of the cushion so they're not visible when the project is done. So we've cut it to size. Now we'll cut our zipper the length of that zipper plaque plus a few extra inches. We'll fold the boxing that was created for our zipper plaque in half so the outside surfaces are facing each other. Then you can iron it if you like or crease it on the edge of a sharp table. You want a good crease there. Now we'll place our zipper on top of the fold so the teeth are centered on the fold to determine where to create our stitch. We want our stitch right along the outside edge of the zipper flange. Now we'll set the zipper aside and sew the boxing. We want our stitch to be half the width of the zipper. Our zipper was one and a quarter inches, so half the width would be 5 eighths inch. And we place the deluxe magnetic guide there to help guide our zipper plaque as we're stitching it together. This will be a preliminary stitch that will be ripped out in a later step. Now where we created the fold, we want to cut it carefully with scissors so that we cut right down the length of the fold. Once that's done, we'll splay the folded portion out so that we can sew our zipper on this side of the zipper plaque. If we've done it carefully and correctly, this zipper plaque should now equal the width of the boxing that we made earlier. Notice how the zipper teeth must be facing the right direction. The teeth are on the underside. Uh, this is a coil zipper, a Vislon zipper. It doesn't matter which way the teeth are facing. Now we'll take it to the sewing machine and we'll be careful to line up the coil zipper so that it's centered between the splayed out portion that we just sewed together and cut down the fold. We want to go slow on this first stitch because if your zipper wanders, then te technically your zipper plaque will not be correct and your teeth will not be centered. The teeth should be centered right on that stitch that we made at first. The Sayerite 111 sewing machine that we're using with the MCSCR power system has a cording foot installed. You'll notice we're using the cording foot throughout the entire installation or sewing of this box cushion. Now we'll turn the zipper plaque around so that we use the same side of the foot to sew the other side. Now since the zipper is secured, we can sew this side fairly quickly. You'll notice the right side of the presser foot is up against the teeth, though the teeth are facing down so you really can't see them, but it is running right alongside the teeth. 
So it's placing the stitch about the halfway position of the zipper flange. We'll cut off the excess zipper because we don't need that anymore. Now we'll take our deluxe seam ripper and rip out the preliminary stitch that holds the zipper plaque halves together. This creates a beautiful zipper plaque for a cushion, so your zipper is hidden between the flaps of fabric to protect it from the elements or to make it look nice. Both of them it accomplishes. A common mistake that people do when making zippers is forgetting to put the slider in place. We've taken the teeth and pulled them apart so they come apart at the end and then we're feeding the fat end of the zipper slider onto the teeth so the two sides are even, then we push it or pull it into position. This is a non-locking slider, meaning the slider can be opened or closed without having to pull on the slider puller. Because our cushion is a striped cushion, we're going to baste everything together to be sure that our stripes are lined up. So we're going to use a quarter inch basting tape around the entire perimeter of this, the top plate. Because our fabric has stripes, we will not have any problem lining up the top plate and the bottom plate when we sew them together. If your cushion doesn't have stripes, you need to concentrate on making match-up notches, as we discussed earlier in the video. If you need to reference how to do that, go back to Chapter 1. Before we can sew the boxing on, since we've chosen to install piping, we're going to base the piping onto this plate. On the back side of our cushion, we'll start at the middle position with the piping hanging over the middle position by approximately two inches and start basting our piping in place uh, on this, the top plate. We want the edges of the piping to be flush with the edge of the actual fabric. When you get to corners that are gradual like this, you don't have to cut relief spots, but when you get to a sharp corner like we will at the front of the cushion, we actually have to cut a few relief uh, cuts in the flange of the piping. So here at this hard corner, you'll notice she takes her scissors. We don't want those relief cuts to be cut too deep into the uh, flange because we don't want to see them when the cushion is all sewn together. So she cuts uh, only uh, approximately an eighth inch away or a little bit closer to the piping, but not so close that it'll show up when we're done. And notice how the fabric expands there at the corner to make a nice transition. Again, we're using a piping that was cut on the bias. Here when we get to the back side of the cushion, we want to cut it so that it's centered. That center stripe is our center uh, line of the cushion. And notice there's excess piping. We want to unfold the one half of the fabric over top of the piping. And then we want to cut the piping so that it is flush. Watch what she does here in the video. And then we'll create a hem on the uh, ex ex the excess uh, fabric that's hanging off to the one side, so be sure you don't cut that off. Only cut the one side, so fe peel that back so you don't cut that, and cut this so they're flush. That should make both of the foam piping ends completely flush, and it does. Now she'll create a hem on the end of the excess fabric, and she's going to create a diagonal hem because that really looks best. That is a preference as well then folds it all together using the basting tape to hold it in place. So now our piping has been installed around the edge. Now we want to install the boxing and we're going to put double sided tape on top of that piping. This is a quarter inch basting tape. Be sure to keep the basting tape away from the piping. We do not want it to show up when the whole cushion is finished otherwise it'll catch dirt. So if anything leave a little bit hanging off the edge if your flange is a little bit short. Notice that it's not right on top of the piping so our stitch will basically hide all the glue reason we're using basting tape is to line up all the stripes. We'll peel off the transfer paper and here we're beginning at the front of the cushion where the seam junction begins and we line up the edges basting all around the perimeter. Be sure to line up the stripes, not the stripes of the piping but the stripes of the actual plate with the boxing. If you don't have stripes this is not that difficult. Stripes always makes a cushion a little bit more difficult to construct but as you can see it's not so hard that it can't be done. There's nothing we can do to line up the stripes on the ends. Obviously they run a different direction so we're not going to worry about it there. Uh, when we get to the back 
side of the cushion, we're going to stop this one short and join our zipper plaque. So we'll actually stop at that back corner and then we'll work on our zipper plaque lining up the stripe starting at the center. So here we're going to stop just about right here. This is the back edge. Now we'll install our zipper plaque. If your cushion were not a stripe, you could sew your zipper plaque onto the actual boxing prior to installing anything. Uh, but since we have to worry about stripes, we want to do it in sections like this. So we start at the center, the back side of the cushion, and base this together all the way to the ends. Once we're done with that, then we'll continue the boxing around the other side of the cushion, just as we did on the opposite side. Next, we'll take it to the sewing machine and start sewing, not where the uh, zipper plaque begins, or ends I should say, but a few inches from the, where the boxing starts here. So we're leaving a couple inches unsewn, and we'll sew all around the perimeter to where the boxing and the zipper plaque start on the other side. So sew all the way around. We're using a cording foot in this sewing machine because the uh, piping has to go into the tunnel. Here at the corner, we'll bury our needle, make any adjustments or turns that we need to make, and sew slowly at the corner to be sure that we make a nice, uh, neat corner and it catches as close to the piping as possible without penetrating it. Okay, sew all the way around, and we'll stop right where the junction is of the zipper plaque. Here we're sewing along the front of the cushion where we've joined the boxing together, and here we're going to stop about two inches short where we will join the boxing to the zipper plaque and we'll do some reversing there to lock our stitch in place. Now we'll start sewing again uh, approximately a couple inches from the end of the zipper plaque and sew all the way down its length to the other end and stop a couple inches short there too because we need to join the zipper plaque end with the boxing end on both sides. So here we're sewing to the other side and we'll stop a few inches short there and then we'll concentrate on joining up the zipper plaque and the boxing so that it looks great. We are showing a more difficult cushion because of the stripes. If it didn't, didn't have stripes there a lot of these steps could be skipped but since it has stripes we're being careful to line everything up. Here we'll join those two pieces together and Angela's creating a fold approximately where she wants to sew them together and then she'll take it to the sewing machine and sew it after she's cut it to size. We're going to cut the excess out with scissors. No reason to use a hot knife here. It will unravel, but the unraveling is rather limited because the uh, size of the fabric is rather short. Do the same thing to the other side. Create a fold, cut the excess fabric, and sew it together. We'll be sewing it together next. All right, there's where we want to create our stitch. You could mark it with a pencil, or you can do as Angela is doing here, holding it together uh, with her fingernail nail right where she wants to create the stitch. She's going to basically take a stab at it that way. She's done a lot of cushions, so she can do it that way. We did reverse there. I don't think we showed that in the video, but we did some reversing there. And we'll do some reversing when we come down to this, the other side. Once the boxing and the zipper plaque have been sewn together, we can rebaste it back on top of the piping that has been basted to the top plate and then we can finish up our sewing. Perfect. Looks good. We'll start about an inch where we stopped sewing and reverse there and sew all the way to the other end where we stopped sewing there and reverse there as well. Notice that Angela keeps the fold down so that it doesn't cause a hard spot. Uh, you always want to keep the folds in the direction that looks best. Follow that same procedure for the other corner. We'll not be showing that. We didn't show it, but we basted the piping to this, the bottom plate. Now we'll take our top plate assembly that's been sewn together and lay it on top of the bottom plate so the outside surfaces are facing each other. Also be sure to line up the back side with the back side of the bottom plate. And now we'll baste the boxing with the double sided tape that we applied already to the piping just as we did previously being sure that the boxing stripes are lined up with the uh, bottom plate stripes. 
We'll then take it to the sewing machine and we'll sew it completely together all the way around. This time we do not have to stop. We just have to uh, sew all the way around to where we started and reverse there and we are done. We'll not show all of this. Here's the forward side. We want to make sure we lay that uh, seam uh, going the same direction as we sewed it on the other side. And that we did, and now we'll just sew all the way around. We are using a cording foot in this, the Sailrite 111 sewing machine with the MCSCR power system. Now that we've sewn everything together, we'll turn the cover right side out. And we need to unzip the uh, zipper and turn the cover so the outside surface is on the outside and be sure that you push any corners out if yours has corners. We're going to use a silk film. This silk film is great usually because it provides a water barrier uh, to help prevent water from soaking into the foam if it's used for an outdoor application. And our cushion will be used on a porch so it may get wet. So we're going to wrap it with the silk film noiseless plastic that you can purchase from Sailrite. If we were using a dry fast foam with a breathable fabric, we would not use the silk film. We actually expect the foam to get wet, but it dries out quickly with a breathable fabric. Because this foam is a polyester, it too will dry out fairly quickly, but we'd rather avoid having any wet cushions at all. That's why we're using the noiseless silk film that you can purchase from Sailrite. If we use the silk film with a polyurethane foam, we can use a vacuum and compress the uh, foam using that plastic that wraps around it and it compresses almost 70% and that helps you to stuff it into the cover. Because we're using a compressed polyester, that really doesn't work for us. Once we have the foam inside the cover, uh, push the cover around until the corners are nice and neat. Then we'll want to be sure that the silk film is covering our foam so it helps to prevent water from coming into the uh, foam. And then we'll zip the cover shut and ensure that we don't zip the uh, silk film into the zipper as we zip it shut. Roll all the edges around so they're nice and neat and our cushion is now complete. That's all there is to making a box cushion. There are not many materials that go into making a box cushion besides foam and fabric. Here's the list of materials that we used. You'll find at the Sarat website a plethora of fabric choices from outdoor fabrics to indoor fabrics. So choose your favorite today at the Sarat website. Since we reused the foam in the old cushion, we don't have to purchase foam. But if you need new foam, be sure to visit us or call us up at Sailrite and we'll help you pick the right foam for your particular cushion application. This box cushion was part of the complete fabric porch makeover, including other projects that may interest you. You may want to click on this video to see before and after shots. For more free videos like this, be sure to check out the Sailrite website or subscribe to the Sailrite YouTube channel today. It's your loyal patronage to Sailrite that makes these free videos possible. Thanks for your support.